Okay, um, what is the financial impact of stroke? Well, it's talking about stroke and atrial fibrillation particularly, um, it turns out that about one-sixth of all strokes are associated with atrial fibrillation. And even in the elderly, that may be higher. And uh, so that's a large amount of strokes overall, which are attributable to uh, thrombi um, due to atrial fibrillation. And it turns out about 80% of those thrombi come from the atria, particularly the left atrial appendage. Okay, is there anything clinicians can do to prevent atrial fibrillation in patients, or at least try to keep it from happening? Well, we have many treatments for atrial fibrillation, but uh, as of currently, as of now, we have no simple single treatment that could be classified as a cure. So we can do many um, steps to help patients with atrial fibrillation. In particular, we have very good therapies to, to minimize the risk of stroke. Okay, and can you talk to me about warfarin from a managed care perspective and how important patient adherence is? Well, the, the uh, association of stroke with atrial fibrillation was first described uh, by the Framingham study in the 1970s, and starting in the mid-1980s through to the mid-1990s, a number of large international trials were done comparing warfarin with placebo or aspirin to show uh, what um, potential benefit it had in stroke reduction for patients with uh, atrial fibrillation or non-valvular atrial fibrillation. And overall, it turns out that uh, with a meta-analysis of many, many trials, uh, warfarin reduces the risk of stroke uh, by about two-thirds, and aspirin reduces it by about one-fifth, both compared to placebo. Okay, and in your presentation, you said sometimes patients are reluctant to adhere or be compliant. Why is that, and what can be done to improve that? Well, there, there are many problems with warfarin. Uh, the, the biggest one that patients dislike is the need for frequent uh, monitoring and adjustment of the dose, the interaction with uh, vitamin K-containing foods, the interaction with many, many other drugs. And so it requires frequent, uh, typically monthly monitoring uh, on stable patients. It has to be adjusted for um, uh, if patients start new drugs, particularly antibiotics. Uh, so this is a well-known problem with warfarin uh, and um, one of the reasons that, that, that the patients uh, overall over the decades have not been very happy with.